So, looks like everything is working. Um, so, welcome. Uh, this is Heart of Freedom. Excuse me, a little congestion. So, uh, checking sound. Um, ben, is this working? Sound? Good. Okay, thanks. So, uh, just an invitation to um, get comfortable, get settled, and um, we'll start our evening of practice together. So, it's the third Thursday, which means I'm in person at PIMC, and uh, so it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to be back in this space and also to share um, these teachings on Zoom and practice together. So um, for folks on Zoom, because um, you can't see the room, um, there are six of us here this evening. So, um, and then uh, two folks, oh, and actually it looks like there's a couple of more folks. So, yeah. So, um, as we get settled, just an invitation to um, start to, um, or perhaps just to continue, to bring the focus in to just what's here in this moment, to step out of uh, kind of preconceived uh, ideas or concepts, preoccupations, and to um, just receive the invitation that um, sitting in this moment offers to center perhaps a sense of groundedness as we connect with um, our feet or with the points of contact where the weight of the body is supported And uh, in Portland uh, this evening, it's uh, it's on the warmer side. So perhaps acknowledging um, the relative warmth or perhaps coolness if we're in a cooler spot. And um, to come more fully into acceptance of the conditions that we find ourselves in. There's um, just perhaps some predominant sensations. Um, and, and so just starting with those and perhaps then um, becoming a little bit more um, kind of um, specific in our focus. And perhaps as we start to be curious about what actually is here in this moment, we discover that there's um, a kind of general disposition or attitude that we start our practice with this evening. So it's, it's good to just notice that. Is this a state of relative calm? Or is there more agitation or restlessness? Is there a sense of sleepiness? Or perhaps there's a sense of really being alert and focused. And there's all different possibilities. So starting with just accepting that this moment, this state of consciousness is like this. And it might be affected by body sensations. So um, to just do at least uh, a minute or two of checking in with various places in the body. Perhaps noticing neck and shoulders. Sensing into is there tension or tightness or constriction or uh, perhaps in the face
And of, of course, we can explore any place where it stands out, uh, either uh, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because there's constriction or tension, or maybe it's more there's open, pleasant, relaxed sensations. And also attending to the posture that we're uh, kind of taking for our meditation. And it's helpful to be intentional. So it's a posture that, that uh, expresses our intention to be alert, to be awake. Which usually means, depending on what's going on with our body, to sit um, with our spine relatively um, upright and to, um, yeah, not be scrunched or slouching makes it easier for the breath to naturally deepen and actually makes it more possible to sit without um, extra pain that comes when our body posture is out of, kind of, out of alignment. And it might be helpful to let the body sway a little bit, back and forth, or front to back, side to side, and just um, come to a place where it feels like there's a kind of a balance or equilibrium. So as we uh, stay attentive to also perhaps uh, deepen a sense of peace and groundedness with the breath, maybe taking a couple of long, slow, deep breaths, and just let that experience of the breath um, accentuate those sensations. So it's perhaps a little easier to find the breath. And in this practice that we'll be starting with this evening, um, to take the breath as our primary focal point, and to take refuge in the direct experience of this moment, with this breath, in this capacity to be awake, in this capacity to know the truth directly, and in this capacity to uh, come together to support each other in practice. So perhaps in some way as we focus inward we can feel the uh, love and the support of our Sangha and our uh, community that wakes up together.
and there's uh, focus on, on the sensations of breathing is done with kindness, with patience and a certain kind of perseverance. Because, of course, um, the tendency of uh, this conditioned state of mind is to go where it is used to going, off into discursive thinking, um, to go into judgments and commentary and problem solving. And those aren't a bad thing. It's just that we tend to get kind of caught up and identified with the futuring or the basting or the abstracting. And this practice is about staying present as best we can. Present with this breath. Present with this state of uh, feeling in the body. So the uh, overarching intention is to be present, to know what's happening in this moment uh, with the experience of the breath, and to do so with kindness. So it's, it isn't coercive. It's no, there isn't a judging 
worth forcing. It's more the invitation. And if it's difficult to stay with the breath because there's lots of things going on in consciousness, it could be a um, gesture of kindness itself to put a hand on your chest or your belly and just to offer that little extra support to stay present with the breath and maybe even experiencing that contact as a gesture of kindness. And as we are able to have a little bit of stability in noticing the breath, uh, we can begin to notice how much change there is. It isn't a static experience. It's changing and moving constantly in flux. And no two breaths are exactly the same. So it's an invitation to kind of deepen our interest and to maintain a deliberate, intentional focus. Uh, mindfulness is this, this balancing between staying at ease and relaxed with the kind attitude and at the same time being persistent and to be deliberate about coming back to our intended focus. And of course uh, there's always uh, going off one direction or another and then realizing there is no point of no return. There's always this moment, this breath to come back to. Um, it's the, there's an ultimate forgiveness. There aren't really any mistakes. There's just remembering, ah, this moment, these sensations of breathing. this return to intimacy with life. So our focus for practice this evening is mindfulness of the body and of course being aware of the sensations of breathing is mindfulness of the body in a very specific uh, location or locations as the case may be wherever you notice the sensations of breath which could be yeah in the belly, expanding, contracting the chest, the touch of the breath at the tip of the nostrils, or just about anywhere. Uh, and if you're already feeling really in the groove and uh, being able to stay 
with successive in and out breaths, and there's a modicum of concentration, then you could try to expand a little bit intentionally to other parts of the body that may not necessarily be directly involved with breathing. And if you'd like to give that a try, I'm going to offer some suggestions. And if the breath is like all you're up for right now, totally stay with the breath. That's, that's totally fine. And you don't have to take these instructions. But if you'd like to try, uh, take attention and place it in your right hand. And just feel the sensations in that hand. And notice what happens when those sensations, um, front, back, sides, when they change to stay present. To be present for warmth, coolness, tingling, vibration, or whatever other manifestation is noticeable. Perhaps there isn't a word to describe it. It's just this, this energy bundle that we refer to as our right hand. Yeah. So I just asked you to do two things. To apply your attention directly to your right hand and then to, for some short period of time, maintain your attention there to just hang out there. And now, if you'd like to continue with this exploration, to deliberately bring your attention to your left hand. And once it's there, maintain your attention Sustain your attention for a minute or two and just hang out with those sensations. And just as with the focus on the breath, if you notice the mind uh, going off and getting caught up in thinking or commentary or judgment, well, the same principle applies here. Just bring it back to the sensation now in your left hand. So it takes on the role of your primary focal point. And, of course, you can always circle back to the breath, return to the breath if you find yourself getting kind of uh, spun out or if this seems a little too subtle or elusive to shift focuses. Practice with the inner wisdom of your own experience. Trust that. And if you'd like to stay with this exploration, um, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to move your attention again. And this time, move it um, in a way that you experiment with um, choosing your own location. Um, just placing your attention on something that is clear, definitive, uh, and decide to stay with it for a minute or two. So this is an invitation to really connect. And once you're there, it could be your left ear or your right big toe. 
decide that you're really going to stay there for at least a minute or two. And it doesn't really matter what part of your body you decide to focus on. To just stay curious about the sensations, what you discover. And now an invitation to go full circle. So from uh, whatever uh, focus uh, in the body is current for you, to um, move back to a place where you tend to experience breathing, where it's easy to notice the breath and place attention there. And then once you're there, to clearly sustain attention as best you can, once again with the proviso that it isn't coercive, that it's based on kindness and curiosity, and it's totally accepting that of course the mind wanders and we gently come back to this object, this focus. So another way of describing this is making the return to breathing a relaxed deliberateness. Um, just connecting with the breath. Just accepting, oh, this breath is like this. And uh, in um, the maybe remaining two or three minutes of the sit, you're welcome, of course, to stay with the experience of the breath. Uh, but you're also welcome to experiment with continuing to move back and staying with some other body sensation. And uh, you could start with what's the most predominant physical sensation, for example, other than breathing. And to see if it's possible to stay with whatever those sensations are without clinging to what might be pleasant or resisting or tensing up against what might be unpleasant. So it's really just allowing the full range of experience. In this field of loving and 
accepting present moment attention. It's like giving your uh, body a kind of uh, bath in loving, cool presence. So in just a moment, the bell is going to ring, and we're um, going to transition into doing some walking and movement. So it isn't um, a signal to end our mindfulness practice. It's more a demarcation or a signaling of a transition. So you could take the sound of the bell as a mindfulness object to kind of help with that transition. And then I'll be offering a little bit of guidance and suggestion for doing some movement and walking. Recording stopped. Actually, I think I'll be called. Recording in progress. Okay. So, um, for folks on Zoom, um, first and foremost, um, Please um, make sure you're in a space where it's safe to um, get up and move and, and walk. Or, or you could do this practice standing if there isn't space there. Or if your body isn't um, able to stand for whatever reason, um, then you could um, continue to do uh, a sweep, body sweep practice, or you could choose to move whatever parts of your body you can. So uh, you can adapt this. this. This practice doesn't require standing or walking. Um, those are optional activities. But for those who are able to, um, so let's, um, let's notice um, what it feels like to be sitting, just to recognize this is a body that sits. How is it that we know that we're sitting? And perhaps we can be mindful of the mental intention to move from sitting to standing. And important if our eyes aren't already open to um, make that a conscious thing. So 
mindfully letting eyes open, noticing that seeing is happening, present with seeing, um, and then with a certain uh, deliberateness and focus on sensations, letting this body move from sitting to standing. And uh, so just being present with this experience of standing, um, maybe just to notice generally what's different. Any body sensations that speak of just having moved? Um, for example, the change in the distribution of weight. So it's mostly concentrated or I should say entirely, perhaps, in the bottoms of our feet. Um, there's a different kind of balance. And um, so we're shifting our focus here from uh, being um, primarily in the inside of the body as it's still, relatively still when we sit, to um, being here with, well, even when we're standing, there's a delicate balancing act to maintain the subtle shifting of weight, to maintain balance in relationship to gravity. And I'd like to invite us to accentuate that a little bit subtly at first just letting weight shift a little bit from one foot to the other, maybe barely noticeable to someone externally, but internally we could feel that shifting, noticing how it changes in the bottoms of our feet where we feel that. And then gradually letting it become more accentuated present, and uh, then um, we're going to um, get to a place where if the foot that's being relieved of carrying the weight, the heel starts to lift. So it's like the beginning of a step, and for folks who aren't walking, uh, you could stay seated and do this, the shifting of weight, or you could move your arms up and down. For folks who choose to walk, so um, we're going to take about, let's say, eight minutes to do a little walking. And um, I have some instructions that are really simple. Um, so once you're at a point where you're in the cycle where a foot is being relieved, then you could take a sh short step forward and be present with that lifting, moving forward, making contact. So the foot goes airborne and then makes a, makes a soft landing and present for that. And so then the practice is to stay with that. So instead of the focus being on the breath, the focus is on this very simple experience of lifting, moving forward, placing. Um, and we can actually make a mental note that corresponds to what the foot is doing. Um, we're balancing back and forth between our feet as we walk. So this becomes our primary focal point. And if you're in a small space, you can just walk in a circle or you can walk in place. If you're at the center, you're welcome to take a few minutes and go outside and walk. Um, and I'll ring a bell when it's time to come back in. 
Of course, uh, if you find that your mind is wandering off or getting kind of caught up in thinking about what you're doing, there's this wonderful large object, this step to come back to. So just receive that invitation.
So the problem is um, folks are getting settled and finding um, their way back to their sitting spots. Um, there's a, yeah, an invitation to, um, yeah, just notice King Ring. I'm going to share some, some brief announcements. Um, first, just uh, a reminder that our, uh, our community, our Sangha, uh, operates on, off of our generosity. Uh, we're here this evening, those of us who are present, or if you're here on Zoom, all of this is only possible through through our mutual support and generosity. And so if you'd like to, um, yeah, contribute to that, if that um, makes sense and is something that brings you joy or pleasure, um, you're invited to visit our virtual Donna Bowl, which I posted uh, in the link there. And um, I've got a small bell on the table here that we can use as our Donna Bowl in the room. So there's that. Um, and then just to mention a few things coming up at PIMC, uh, this Saturday, um, Jim Dalton is doing Qigong um, retreat. So uh, it's Saturday, July 20th from 10 to 4. That's in person right here at PIMC. Um, there's a big sale coming up. The Barking Dog Library sale is happening on Sunday from 10 to 1. Um, sitting here, I see lots of boxes with books in them which are duplicates. So, and they're $3 a pop. Every $3 purchase supports PIMC. So it's a fundraiser as well. Uh, and then uh, the next uh, first Saturday retreat is August 3rd. That's with Robert Beatty. It's uh, the map or a map for the journey. That's from nine to four. I think that's that's the, within the next month. Those are the things that I'd like to mention. Um, I'll be teaching on Sunday, so if you happen to be in town or on Zoom, um, would love to see you. So um, I'd like to give us a chance to do a brief check-in. Um, since we did the walking, we don't have quite as much time. But it would be wonderful if uh, any one or a few of you would like to share just a brief experience of what's most alive for you this evening. It's totally optional. Um, and um, when, you're, when you're speaking, if you'd like to share your name, that's great. And then when you're finished, just say, I have spoken. So that would let the next, next person know that it's their turn. Um, so yeah, just a, just a word or two would be wonderful if anybody would like to share. For folks in the room, um, I'll just need to point the um, directional mic towards you. If you do want to be seen, um, I have this iPad here. You can come up and sit in this chair and hold it and then folks on Zoom can see you. Um, I'm trying to respect people's privacy in this room. If you don't want to be seen, um, then we're not going to point a camera in your direction. So, um, yeah, so I open things up. Any, any sharing? I am <clears throat> wind blowing silk ribbon tied to a bamboo pole, each gust whispering clay. Um, what comes up for me is, I've mentioned this uh, before we started, I've been feeling a lot of existential dread lately. Um, 
and just recognizing that uh, I'm not in control of everything in the world um, and that things don't turn out the way sometimes we hope and sometimes human beings can be very disappointing and we have been for our entire history. Um, in the face of that though, there's this miracle I've said this before, it's like a miracle stacked on a thousand other miracles called love, which I'm grateful for beyond words. It's a, in, in the practice, there's a lot of times there's feelings that are not utterable with words and the gratitude that I feel um, around that miracle is uh, unspeakable. Um, I'm grateful for the Sangha and um, our practice, and may all beings benefit from the merit of our practice. I would be more than happy to share a few words. My name is Shane, first of all. I am always delighted to be here on a Thursday night with this Sangha, both in person and virtually, with Doug at the helm in teaching. Very grateful for all of your teaching, Doug, so thank you. I am experiencing a great deal of stillness, both in body and in mind, and I have spoken. Uh, my name is Ben. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, so, last few weeks, there's just been a lot of uh, really kind of uh, bad news, I guess, in the world. And it's been, it feels like it's been infiltrating kind of every, um, every group of people I'm around and every, every outlet of media and everything else that, I, that I've come into contact with. And I was realizing today just how much that's affected me and like kind of acutely the last couple of days, but I was really surprised at how I was today. I, was, I went for a walk and I was just in a really bad state with it. And I was surprised to see how easily and how naturally my mind kind of noticed it and held it at a distance and looked at it. Um, and from that point, it's like, oh, this is something I'm not, you know, like concretely attached to, not like melded with or experiencing inside it. I'm actually able to look at it from outside. That was really, really helpful today to kind of deal with, with uh, all these things that feel like they're coming at me, you know? And I guess I'll add that, that I think that was, I think that's due to a lot of the things, um, a lot of the practices through PIMC that I've done. So I really appreciate uh, Center being there and it's Thursday nights especially. Mm -hmm. I have spoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Kathy. Uh, my name is Kathy. And uh, I've uh, been a 
very long time since I've actually come in person to the center and uh, just noticing a lot of change, which is nice. <laughs> and, uh, and like others have also articulated, I see them feeling some deep weight. And I felt it physically tonight as we did our body, body scan. It was a weight, a weight of know, the situation. And sometimes the weight of the heat, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but especially slowing down to notice it and going outside. And the stillness allowed me to So I'm um, just checking, anybody just on the verge of jumping in, want to share? Okay. Um, I missed an important announcement, so I'm going to circle back. Uh, coming up on this Sunday evening, oh, I'm sorry, not this Sunday, uh, it's... Uh, Sunday, August 3rd, um, Candle Summers is hosting uh, Sister Aya Veranani. Um, and um, so that's um, the um, Sunday evening practice with Candle from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, and she's a um, Buddhist nun. Um, and there's a um, wonderful description on our website, so I encourage you to go and take a look at that. So, so our focus on, um, on this warm um, July 18th evening is on coming back to the body, which is um, an um, important part of Buddhist practice, of uh, Dharma practice. So, um, and um, part of the reason that it's important is because the body is always here in the present moment. Our thoughts and our minds might be off someplace else, kind of lost in uh, worry or distraction or concern or yeah, just preoccupations, but the body is always right here. And being present uh, is, the, is the primary um, force for alleviating um, dukkha, really. Pre presence with kindness, presence with acceptance. So uh, the body is is such an important ground for our cultivation. And so part of our task uh, in meditation is to bring the body and the mind 
together so um, that they're at the same place in the same time. That may sound kind of strange, um, but our minds can be off in um, fantasy land or in yesterday or tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, it's mostly about bringing the mind to the body, really, so that they're working together, so that our thinking isn't at odds with what our body is doing, and so that our actions and our, um, our intentions and our values are in alignment. So there, there's an integration that happens. Um, we, can, we can get lost in reactive conditioning and compulsive behaviors um, that may or may not reflect what our deepest values and beliefs are about how we'd like to, to be in the world, how we'd like to show up. So um, the focus on the body really connects in with all aspects of the Eightfold Path. Certainly, I mean, understanding, of course, understanding the importance of the focus on the body, to be present with the intention so that our, our movements, our actions reflect what our deepest intentions are. And then, of course, there's the moral and ethical conduct aspect of things. Um, speech and action happens with the body. So if we're present, it isn't that there isn't impulses to say or do things that might be unskillful or not in accordance with what we aspire to. But if we're deeply present in the body, we can notice them uh, at their nascent level before they manifest in, sp in speech and action. So that's an incredible thing. It's really beneficial. Um, I can't tell you how many times um, I've noticed tension in the body that I recognized as an emotion of perhaps irritation or impatience or anger. And because I noticed it as, as a body sensation, I could identify what the emotion was, notice the feeling tone, and it didn't translate into saying something that I would regret or doing something that would be harmful. So um, it's incredibly useful. Um, and also reconnecting with our bodies isn't always the easiest thing for um, some of us, for a lot of us, I would say. Um, there's a lot of us in this culture that have chosen, um, not necessarily consciously chosen, um, to disconnect, to um, kind of cut off from the neck down. Um, and there's lots of reasons for that, and I don't have time to go into them this evening. Um, but it um, is, I would say, generally a strategy that we tend to develop at a young age to try to manage the pain, the emotional pain or physical pain. Um, disassociation, disconnection is, is an option that seems to be part of coping with trauma and emotional overwhelm. Um, and um, it works to the extent that we can kind of numb out or disconnect uh, in the short run, but in the long run, there's, there's consequences for that disconnection, that sense of alienation that we might feel from ourselves, uh, from, uh, from each other, from life in general. So this practice is, um, for some of us, um, an invitation to reconnect. And it's a um, organic, non-coercive, uh, gradual, if it needs to be, uh, reacquaintance with and coming fully into relationship to our fully embodied experience. Um, 
And, um, and just to emphasize what I'm saying, uh, if you hear any judgment or criticism about the disconnection, um, that would be unintentional on my part. Because I've sat with many people who uh, wouldn't be here today if they couldn't do that. So um, it isn't a it isn't a, a diss or a, a criticism. It, for some people, meant survival that they were able to do that. So and only when it's safe and appropriate to reconnect do we do so. And so it's in the context of sangha and these teachings that there's an invitation to do that. Um, and. For some people, um, some folks I've worked with, um, these are mostly on individual um, consultations, um, to even focus on the breath was anxiety provoking and really unskillful as a place to start. So finding an object in the room that they could focus on and bring one pointed attention to and then calming and then gradually moving closer, holding um, something external as a, as a starting point, um, and then gradually being able to move in. So, I mean, there is, like I said, there, there is a whole continuum of possibilities um, to uh, slowly train uh, to reawaken, to rediscover. Um, and um, as this ability to sense what exists in our body becomes stronger, um, it, it gives us tons of really important information. Um, and if we show up in our body, we can sense the fullness of our being and start to feel our connection with life, with the, with the earth, to not feel so alienated or separated from the world around us. This skin is an aperture. Our senses are incredibly um, sensitive and connect us with, with the environment that we live in and ultimately help us recognize that we aren't really separate that we're, um, we're, we're connected with the, with the earth, with the, with the universe, with each other. So, um, there's a, um, there's a Wendell Berry poem, um, that I want to share. Um, this kind of goes along with our walking outside and we weren't walking in the woods, but here's the poem. Always in big woods when you leave familiar ground and step off alone into a new place, there will be, along with the feelings of curiosity and excitement, a little nagging of dread. It is the ancient fear of the unknown, and it is your first bond with the wilderness you are going into. You are undertaking the first experience, not of the place, but of yourself in that place. It is an experience of your essential loneliness or aloneness, for nobody can discover the world for anybody else. It is only after we have discovered it for ourselves that it becomes a common ground and a common bond, and we cease to be alone. We cease to be alone. And the world cannot be discovered by a journey of miles, no matter how long, but only by a spiritual journey, a journey of one inch, very arduous and humbling and joyful, by which we arrive at the ground at our feet and learn to be at home. So, um, yeah, 
Um, sometimes the practice on mindfulness of body sensations is seen as um, mindfulness kindergarten practice. It's like, oh, okay, well, we'll do that, but that's not really like the real thing. That's sort of preparatory. Um, and uh, in my experience, there couldn't be anything further from the truth. Um, some of the most profound experiences that I've had have come through a deep um, penetrating experience of the impermanent nature of this body, this energy bundle. Um, and um, this tradition that we practice in here um, at PIMC, going back through Robert Beatty to Ruth Dennison to Uba Ken in, um, in Burma, um, is, um, is a, a practice of embodied awakening. So um, the, the teaching is basically um, in a retreat format, you start with, just like we did this evening, focus on the breath. Um, on a 10-day retreat, you do the first three or four days of Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing. And then you go into a body sweep practice. Um, and for, for the next six days, it's, it's body sweeping um, for basically from when you wake up in the morning until you go to sleep. Um, you know, Ruth Dennison had a lot of variations on that in terms of group movement practice and lots of uh, guided body sweeps um, to basically help assist uh, Western students with coming out of conceptual. Yeah, you have a question? Do you mind yeah. describing, because everybody may not know, yeah. a little bit of what a body sweep is? Sure, yeah. So it's, um, we, we started with that um, in the sit. So um, it would be kind of where we ended up there, where you start to move kind of uh, th uh, through uh, your body methodically, maybe from your head down to your toes or from your toes back up and just um, bear attention with the sensations. Uh, coming back at the mind wanders, noticing the feeling tone, uh, the variety of sensations. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, and um, so I'm going to kind of um, condense this down to kind of the essentials here just to kind of um, fit in with the time. Um, so in practicing mindfulness of the body, it's your direct experience or felt sense that's important, not your judgments about your body, your wishes for what it might be, or even stories. Um, and so um, the Buddha called this felt sense, uh, he referred to it as awareness of the body in the body, meaning your attention has dropped into the actual physical experience rather than concepts or ideas. Um, so you can experience this felt sense through this exercise that I'm going to offer you. This is a very short exercise, totally optional. So you could try holding your right hand and begin by looking at it, looking at the back of your hand and to notice what you see. You might notice the skin color, the veins, whether there are any wrinkles or scars. There might be a tendency to go off into stories, but just coming back to seeing. And now turn it over and look at the palm. You might notice its shape or the length of your fingers and you can even alternate between looking at the front and the back to observe the length of various finger bones, 
And so the invitation is just to witness this. Yeah, just notice it. That's a kind of mindfulness. Um, but we're observing it from the outside. So in a way, I mean, it's seeing this hand and observing it. So we can notice that seeing is happening. But we're not directly experiencing the essence of this appendage. So um, now rest your hand for a moment. And with your eyes closed, raise your hand again and start to move your hand in space. Let your wrist move with your hand. You might curl the fingers in towards the palm and then extend it out a little. And with your attention, feel the thumb, the fourth finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, perhaps the little finger, the palm in the back. And then lay your hand, um, go back down. Notice that. And to observe, this is a very different experience than looking at your hand. To notice the sensation from the inside, this felt sense. This is the felt sense of the body. It's a non-conceptual, direct, experiential understanding. This is what's happening. Um, we tend, um, to the degree that we choose not to want to feel discomfort, to uh, distract ourselves, disconnect from that direct experience. So this practice is about coming back in to that. Um, and if you experience chronic pain, uh, it could be particularly challenging. There's ways of working with that. Um, and the same phenomenon happens around emotional suffering. It, it also registers in the body. Um, and then the mind contracts and clings. Um, maybe there's more tension. So the body, so we have to disconnect more. So there's a kind of feedback loop. Um, and um, we can use the very same kind relaxed attention and softening into awareness for our emotional and psychological stuff as we use for the physical. Um, usually easier to start with the physical for most of us, but um, I work as a psychotherapist, a body-centered psychotherapist, and um, this is kind of the direction that I tend to go with most folks is is in to that experience and we can do it ourselves um, we can meet these body experiences with mindfulness and compassion once we're in the experience um, mindfulness of the body in the body then we can bring compassion the compassionate intention we can do things like saying to ourselves um, the Hurt and anger feels like this. I, I'm sorry that you're hurting. Or um, there's an acknowledgement. There's a kindness. There's a sense of, of caring that we can bring. Um, and if we don't judge our feelings, if we don't try to get rid of them, get rid of the hurt or anger, uh, they self-liberate. Um, they, uh, they release by themselves. Um, and you don't have to take my word for that. That may sound fantastical. It's like, how could that be? I don't have to make it go away. Um, it takes patience and perseverance. But everything changes. Given the conditions of acceptance, and uh, the ability to tolerate what Philip Moffat calls the ouch of dukkha. Um, I mean, that's a big thing. That isn't easy. That goes against the grain of our conditioning and our cultural direction. 
um, suffering self-liberates. It changes our relationship. I'm not saying that the pain goes away. Um, but our relationship to pain goes away. Sometimes the pain goes away. Um, but the, um, the suffering that's caused through resisting and clinging, uh, that changes. That can change. So, um, yeah. And um, so we're just at the end of our time. Um, this is just very, very tip of the um, iceberg of teachings. Iceberg is kind of a nice metaphor on an evening like this. I think it about floating on an iceberg. Um, so um, I'm going to stop there. And since it's getting late, I think what I'll do is um, we'll circle back next week and there'll be more time for questions and sharing um, and um, let's do our closing so this um, closing is really just in uh, complementary practice of cultivation of kindness which goes right along with this embodied uh, exploration so just to listen to your heart, to your body, to listen to what is it that you'd like to offer, any gesture or intention of kindness for uh, yourself, for your apparent self, or for a loved one, or for the world for our country. Yeah, noticing what comes up. And um, to formulate an intention, what is it that you'd like to, what would be an expression of your deepest values, your belief about what you'd like for yourself, what you'd like for the people that you love, what you'd like for the world? And yeah, just pick pick one thing. Yeah. And if it makes sense to formulate into a simple aspiration, yeah, may I be peaceful, or may the world um, awaken to love and kindness, or... Yeah, those are just some examples. Yeah. And notice how it feels in your body to hold this intention. Is there any change? Yeah, yeah. And just to imagine that we're, as we practice with it locally, within this mind and this body, that we tap into something that's universal in us as human beings that we can't really describe in words, but we tap into that, that shared heart, and extend it out to all beings everywhere. And I'd like to invite us to close with a simple chant, may all beings be happy, uh, three times, and then sadhu, three times. Folks on uh, Zoom, you're welcome to unmute to join in. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And please.
please be invited to share whatever merits there are from our practice, all of the good things with all beings. And anything that's not helpful that I may have shared this evening, just let it go. Only take what's good and uh, put it into practice, continue to practice. And be safe and well, and hope to see you again soon. I'm planning on circling again, back again next month in August on the third Thursday um, for an in-person. In the meantime, we'll um, continue our weekly Zoom offering. So stay cool and uh, take good care. Thanks, Thanks Doug. Doug. Thank you, Doug. Love you, Doug. <laughs>Closing windows is something that you have time for. Um, that would be wonderful. There's a window that I don't want to forget about in the in the um, library. So um, yeah, just so I'm thinking about that. That would be great. Look at all these good books. Yep, there's lots of good stuff there.